Hello, everybody. My name is Joe Renee Feeler, and welcome to today's podcast. I am so glad that you're here, and I'm glad to be here too. I was sick last week and mending nicely. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I missed you guys <laughs> last week, and I'm glad to be here. Um, I uh, rescheduled some of my sessions from last week into this week and next week. And then when I started sessions again, when I started feeling better, and I think it was Sunday, I, um, yeah, uh, there've been, there's been some rewiring and upgrading, upgraded wiring going on because I, <laughs> I feel all, uh, sort of, uh, somehow new and improved from all this. I wonder if you guys feel that sometimes when you, um, have been through some sort of illness or sickness that somehow there's some, uh, yeah, upgrades in it, even though it doesn't feel like it in the, <laughs> in the process most of the time. Okay. So what are we doing here? Um, I have a connection to uh, innate wisdom that I can't explain as my MBA brain as Jill. And yet it's proven um, over and over and over again in my work since around 2008, 2009 um, of the, I know things that I don't I wouldn't otherwise know and couldn't otherwise know as human gel. And the way that I choose to use this gift is to help further inform humanity in ways of consciousness, enlightenment, that um, to me, even personally as Jill, feel like a huge upgrade from what we know from um, maybe traditional religions um, or even um, very popular sort of new agey type, type teachings. We tend to turn things upside down and have a very fresh take on things, all for the purpose, all for the glory <laughs> of um, a further embodiment of gloriousness within our humanity. We have access to so much more than we realize. And um, putting ourselves in, in the, the role of seeker, where we, we never graduate from that, where we're never the finder, is a problem for me. Um, because I know it doesn't have to be that way. How do I know it? It's because of the connection that I have with the innate wisdom. So I don't know if I can explain it better, <laughs> better than that, but here we go. Let's do a brief connecting exercise. I encourage you to close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that. <sighs> and just relaxing your body. Breathing deep into your lungs. Very nice. Okay, another deep breath, and this time make it a belly breath where your belly expands. Okay, gently wiggle, wiggle your toes, gently wiggle your fingers. Let yourself feel all the way into your body suit. Some of us that are attracted to uh, messages like this, we tend to get really high up in our energy field, high up in our upper chakras, and our lower chakras are sort of starving for attention, and maybe our human life feels like it's starving for attention too. And this is, a, this is a, a pretty interesting gig we've got going on here in our human body suit, so I encourage you to, uh, to live it <laughs> fully. Okay. All right. And let's just imagine that there is actually a light behind your eyes, a light source from within you that would confuse and um, maybe even, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just stick with confuse, the linear brain, the processing of the left hemisphere of the brain. Let's just imagine there's that light within you behind your eyeballs. Okay, let's be curious about that light. Some of you may feel yourself sort of sliding into or falling into the light behind your eyes. And it can feel almost like a slide, like a portal all the way down to your heart. And then into the heart in a way that actually goes beyond the time space continuum. Beautiful. Now we're talking, right? Okay. So is this real? Is this, um, is this true that there is a connection between our humanness, this, this physical representation of you, and something that's beyond time, beyond space, into a realm that is limited to imagination, can't be, is beyond, beyond, beyond proof, maybe even beyond reason <laughs> for some of you? but never beyond the realm of possibility. And in the realms of possibility, 
that are beyond the realms of being proven in a physical reality, you often find um, a more enriching experience with your creativity, with what I call creator energy. And that's where a whole bunch of um, possibilities for not only personal success, but human evolution reside. Okay, there we go. (sighs) All right. Okay, let's stay right here. Very good. Let me get a a sip of my tea. Hmm. Okay. I just want to double check. I feel this is going to be an important message. And sometimes with these, there there are technical sorts of glitches that happen, and I don't want that to happen. Okay, so I think we're good, ready to get started here on whatever we're going to be talking about. I don't share from notes. I don't share from a script. Um, I share live and on the fly so that my left hemisphere of my brain, which is very highly developed, um, the ultimate rationalist you'll probably ever find, um, or at least one of, I, um, I have to trick the left hemisphere of my brain to not get involved in what we're doing here. And the way that I do that as human Jill is through not preparing. That way I've only got, the only net I have is the source creator energy, God, um, to, to sort of land on. Okay, all right. Okay. Hmm. So some of you have been wondering about something related to who in your reality knows what you know about the eternal um, nature of your light body, about the infiniteness of your soul. And what we've been offering over the past few years is then this notion that your soul is fully ascended that your soul is actually fully evolved and that it would never consider coming to earth if it needed evolution of a kind of, um, of an upward spiral to graduate and reach higher rungs of the ladder. Earth would not be a great place for that. So this, this fresh take that your soul is fully ascended and that you wanted to be here by choice in this reality and that's what led to your incarnation for then you to decide what you want to do and be in your you your one your individual your individuated source of energy that you are okay some of you have been wondering who else knows about this who else knows that some of the sacred teachings are compromised so let's let's go there. I feel like I'm showing my credentials that I have the authority to talk about this. Okay. Here we go. The highest levels of the Catholic Church, the Church of England, and other Christian-based organizations and institutions have known for many centuries that what is known as the Holy Bible has some flaws in it that go back to the original translations of the texts. Constantinople um, is related to this um, well-intended but ill-advised alteration of the original Gospels, the original materials. There are similar but unrelated 
deficiencies in the Old Testament of the Holy Bible as well. Most of those compromises fall under a general theme of disenfranchising the individual and perpetuating this idea that the individual cannot trust themselves and needs to rely on a higher authority for a sense of purpose, a sense of values, a sense of principles. So if they know, why wouldn't they be saying anything? There's too much uncertainty about what the texts should be. There is, an, there is a somewhat a sense of stability with the compromised texts being out there and their approach is related to the Christian religion to number one, and I know this sounds silly to many of you, but, but that doesn't mean it's not true, um, to wait for the second coming of Christ, which they believe in. And number two, and or number two, excuse me, to wait for a satisfactory replacement system for what is currently there. That replacement system is in many ways why many of us, me, you, you get to decide if you're in that, in that you, are here. To fully flesh out the replacement And so far, so good. What, what Christ intended, what Yeshua intended, was to demonstrate the bringer of light and the personal connection that all life has to a loving, caring, but judgmental. Why does it have to be but? How about, and also judgmental? a uh, source creator God, that all life forms are inherently connected to that source energy, that all life forms are inherently loved, and that in a reality like Earth, that love of, of God can feel uh, distorted, waning, um, undeserved, etc. We find it not a coincidence that many of you have left those institutions with a sense of soulful knowing that something was off, that something was askew. And we're asking you to open your hearts to those that are still within those institutions and to those that are trying to manage those institutions. Um, the, the role of a of spiritual or institutional leader is an incredibly thankless job with pressures that most of us cannot imagine. We are here to assist them in assisting this place, this beautiful, sacred, wonderful place. The fact that so many of us have this sort of inner compass of what we're looking for in this reality when it comes to sacred teachings and divine truths is further evidence of how you are wired as your eternal self for your being, the fellow bringer of light to Yeshua and the others that you are. So now do you see more clearly why we have been so vocal 
about you stepping back from any sacred teachings that were here when you arrived because none of them have been an adequate replacement and you knew that as your eternal self. You knew that as you and that is why you are here. So it isn't that there is It's not that there is no value in any of those secret teachings, whether it be Hinduism, Buddhism, any of the others. It's that there are such big gaps in it or flaws in it or voids in it or misdirections in it that it's important to have caution about just handing over your life to some of these energetic structures that keep your one in any way distant or not yet ready for not yet evolved to receive the inherent source energy that you are So we know how scary and bold and even arrogant it can feel at times to look at what are called sacred teachings in your world and to disagree with them in totality or disagree with them in in certain points, certain areas. And yet you are actually wired for that. You wired yourself in that way. So what would be more disrespectful? Would it be more disrespectful to pretend that you agree with some of the sacred teachings that were here when you arrived? That you owe it to some former masters to uphold their version of what source is, what this reality is, cosmology, on and on and on. Or is it more disrespectful to deny what you know are problems and flaws and gaps and voids in those teachings? Because the biggest opportunity that we see here is for anyone any individual human to recognize, recognize the inherent eternal energy, the innate sovereignty of the force of life that is beyond this space, this life. That recognition glorifies all good things in this reality. And not everything is good in your reality. And that's been another big pretend (sighs) that many of those flawed teachings have guided some of you into that it's all good. No, it's not all good. There's a lot in your reality that is not good. So the more that you can be that discernment of what is glorifying of light and love, what is respectful of life, respectful of yours and everyone else's, what holds that value to the highest standard, whether it's in politics, personal constitution, personal ways of living, your value system that you hold within yourself, all of that is on the table for reflection and consideration.
Because even your fellow masters that, that had it right, it wasn't recorded right. And by nature, within the human bodysuit, we are flawed. That's not an original sin, that's a context of being in a time-space continuum in an era where there is forgetting to this level, to this degree. Hmm. So we recognize that some of you are just like, tell us what it is. Tell us, tell us what the real truth is. It isn't that simple. And we can't hand you a text or a blueprint to follow, but we can guide you back to, for those in an audience like this, we can guide you back to you, how you've known how you've sensed so far, what felt off to you that doesn't feel right, that doesn't feel like the God I know. How do you know? It's because of who and what you are as your eternal self that you are connected to. That's how you knew something was off to begin with. That same system can carry you through in a very beautiful way going forward in your life. So to those of you that are wanting to simplify it in, in any way, you're fooling yourself. That, that this is easy, that this is going to be a piece of cake, um, that it's not a daily, <laughs> a daily opportunity for discernment and opportunity of you being your light in your purest way. We feel some of you asking, so is there any value in studying learning, applying any of those sacred texts that were here when you arrived or have been created since then. It's not that there's not any value. It's that be choosy about what makes sense to you, what feels right to you. And a system that, that we use with, with Jill all the time is, as we're interacting with her, does what she's receiving from us, which is her as her eternal self, does what is what she is what she is receiving feeling honoring and loving of her and honoring and loving of everyone else? That that's that is very simple and yet is a is a, a beautiful starting point for for what is real and what is not. Um, Oh, that feels. Okay, hang on. We're going to we're going to go here, but The reason we just shared that with you, that that filter that Jill, that Jill uses for assessing the vibrational range of what she's receiving and sharing and applying in her own life, is that there is a glorification of battle in your world, in everything, <laughs> okay? In what is known as the Holy Bible, And in not, not Buddhism and not Hinduism, but in the other religions, there's definitely the same thing. And it also has sprinkled into some aspects of more unusual consciousness and uh, notions of, of life in other realms, um, alien, ET, um, okay, hang on, guys. <laughs> I'm 
showing my credentials again. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's not that there aren't battles and uh, conflicting uh, ideals and conflicting agendas not just in the third dimension, but also the fourth dimension. And that would include the astral and um, hostile reptilian forces, you know, those, those sorts of uh, UFOlogy kind of concepts. <sighs> the David Icke stuff, yes, okay. Or at least what he used to do. It's not that there aren't those those conflicting of wills, it's that they are at such a different vibrational range of the game that you are so above that in terms of your access to a version of truth and light that transcends that just as similarly as overcoming an argument with, with someone close to you that is in a I mean, it's, it's not that hard to, to recognize where the, the, the heat of the argument or the passion and the belittling each other, picking on each other, etc., tearing each other down. It's so easy to just step back and say, what are we doing here? Where, where are we going with this, right? It's not that the points are wrong. There may be truth in actually some of the, some of the bickering um, and argumentation. It's that it's not going anywhere. It, it doesn't get you anywhere. So by stepping back with two beings that are emotionally mature enough to do so, you can rise above that uh, grind and, and see the, the bigger picture and, and move forward in an upward spiraling, uh, light expanding sort of way. If not for both of you, or all the parties involved, at least for the individual that has the presence to do so, okay? So that whole genre of, um, of this group is against this group, or we have to get that group of our, out of our way and that sort of thing, to us it feels like more of a distraction for, for a group like you than anything else. Um, it's entertaining though, <laughs> right? And Earth can be boring. Um, so, so we get, the, we get the, uh, the fascination with it in many ways, but it's just not, it's not that, it doesn't have to feel that real. Um, and what's really interesting is that there's been a, a, a tightening of tension, um, heightening of tension related to even gender war and racial tension and all these things. And we just feel Martin Luther King Jr. here just kind of shaking his head like, where, what happened? What happened? How did it get here? And it's, and it's not based on data. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a magnification of corner cases as if they apply to a bigger population and that's simply not true and it has overtaken politics it's it's in impacted policy um immigration policy and all these it's so it's just rippled through and like caught on like wildfire um this battle glorification of the battle and so many humans actually now they've based their whole identity on the battle and what side they're on that it it takes some significant undoing to again just step back and go wait a minute what are we what are we really doing here like where is this going and and is is what we're seeming is is this huge group it it's is it even that big it isn't it isn't that big. You're, you're fighting ants. So this isn't to say there, there isn't some truth to the lingering problems of things like racism, uh, misogyny, etc. It's that it's so exaggerated and so overblown that it, it is captivating and taking you out of, for a group like this, again, someone who would listen to a message like this, it's taking you out of the divine privilege and opportunity you have to be the bringer of light that you came here to be. 
so what does that mean? What do you do about this? What, what do you want to try first <laughs> is, is where we would uh, direct you. What, what feels good to you? How do you want to untangle yourself um, from some of those minor dramas that seem like they're the only thing going on sometimes to certain people? But that doesn't have to be, include you. Okay, okay. Okay, so... You, as a group of bringers of light, have done such an absolutely fantastic job. Oh, you've decided you can be in your day job <laughs> and be a bringer of light. You can have a career, a, a mainstream career that makes possibly great money, and, and be your, the bringer of light that you are. You can be in uh, conventional relationships. You don't have to do anything too crazy and weird or undo anything uh, in an uncomfortable way to be the bringer of light that you are. You can be the bringer of light in anything and everything that you are being. The light isn't something you connect to. It's who and what you are. The light isn't something you connect to. The light is who and what you are. We feel so much compassion for you for how confusing <laughs> it is within the human bodysuit and how silly you can feel sometimes that when we say something like that, it's like part of you just wants to say, duh, how could I have forgotten that? How could I need a reminder of that? Earth is an extremely strange place. So it's easy. <laughs> it's it's harder to remember that. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's so compelling to forget it, given the structures and the dynamics and so many other things, so many other factors, okay? Okay. How are you feeling right now? Free, hopefully. Loved, hopefully. Seen, hopefully honored, hopefully, peaceful, hopefully. That's the lamb aspect, right? Now let's talk about the lion aspect. The part of you that wants to be like the male lion standing on the tallest rock on the savannah, so that your roar can be heard for miles. It all fits together so beautifully. Some of you want so badly to be seen and heard like the male lion on that high perch carefully chosen for all of all of the lands to hear its roar and to know its presence. In this case, your surroundings can feel deaf, blind, and even dumb <laughs> to your roar, to the light of Source Creator within all life. Thankfully, your role as a bringer of light is not dependent on being seen or being heard. When your objective was clearly and carefully designed for you to be the bringer of light that you are, the presence of light, the presence of God in your life, you are free from how anyone does or does not respond to you. You are free from the need to be in a public role or have a certain number of followers or a certain number of eyeballs on what you're doing. You can do it absolutely privately in your individual life as your glorious one and be nailing it. Nailing 
like it. <sighs> That's funny. Jesus just said, interesting pun, Jill. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was. <laughs> From his perspective, right? Okay, how are you guys doing? Ooh, all right. <laughs> I love February. <laughs> I love February. Oh, I I really I really love every month. That's that's true. But there is something about February. <laughs> and I I felt February was going to be special, and this is our first message of February, and we nailed it, you and I together, didn't we? Right alongside our teams. That was awesome. Oh, feels so good. Okay, let me get a drink of water here. I'm going to mute you guys. Okay, I am back. Let's go in the chat room here. <laughs> Rose, thank you. She's saying, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Hi, Sheila. She's saying, what a powerful, liberating, and loving message. I'm a paid soloist in an Episcopalian church. I listen to the readings from the Bible every week. My feelings let me know if what is read is true or false. Thank you. So much love for you. Oh, great system. Oh my gosh, Sheila. And the idea of you sharing your light through your voice and your presence in that church just feels so holy. Yeah, thank you. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, you're welcome, Amy. She's saying thank you for going here today. Okay. All right. Shelly's saying intuitively knew as a child that the ancient writings and modern lessons stemming from them were false. How do we facilitate movement away from the incorrect false old to the fleshing out the new replacement models for ourselves and others we serve. Thank you all. Oh, that's a great question. And I mean, Shelly, please continue to ask yourself that question. It's it's exactly the right question is what your team is saying. How do you want to play your beautiful role, sister, in, in doing that in your communities and with those you are beautifully interacting with, right? So we each have a you know, a unique, uh, we're each one, right? So we each have our own one and respecting our own individual differences and what we're led to and what we, what we appreciate and what we enjoy and what feels good to us. Um, there is no one right way. So please make your own way and just start anywhere, right? I'm, this is, this is how I do it as Jill, right? This, this feels good and right and even fun and energizing and rewarding uh, to me and the feedback that I get from people um, about the, I want to say the, the upgrades they're receiving from, from what we're doing is so, oh, it's just really validating that we're on the right track here and we're, we're onto something really important and good uh, for further releasing the light of Source Creator God within this reality. So exactly right question, Shelley. And it's almost like your team is saying, you get to decide <laughs> what, what, the, what your first try at, at what that answer could be. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, and also recognize that, recognize, please, the part of you uh, within your Shelley that would ask the question, right, is coming from a beautiful part of the left hemisphere of your brain that is under the impression that there is an answer, okay? That's important to know. So part of you as Shelley is thinking there is an answer to this question. If, if I just ask it, then I'll get the answer that I'm looking for. But this isn't that, okay? So what we're doing as, and that's why I keep calling us pioneers, as bringers of light, we are creating, we are, in, we are creatively inserting and laying down things and offering things, sprinkling things around in this reality for the purpose of expanding light 
in this reality. It's already there at its core, but it doesn't know it's there, right? We know it's there within all life and we know it's within ourselves. So we, we, that's what we do. We're not attached to the outcome of who does what with it, but it feels purposeful for us to be our light in, in our way. Um, okay. So one thing I like to say in private sessions to further amplify this point for those of you that very, with very strong analytical minds, and I, I, I have one myself, so I get it. But this is a, a nice example that comes up in private sessions is it's almost like the brain, if you were walking into your kitchen to prepare lunch, it's almost like your brain would say, well, what are we going to have for lunch? Well, I want to, uh, you know, before we decide what we're going to have for lunch, I want to taste it first. It doesn't make sense, right? It, it's not, the lunch isn't there yet. You can't taste it first. But the brain in a question like this, which is such a great question, it's not that it's a bad question. It's that it's rec uh, us recognizing, oh yeah, that's right. It's not, we don't have lunch yet. So we're in our creator space of what we're going to create for lunch. And then we can <laughs> decide if we like it or not and adjust accordingly, right? <laughs> okay, so that's what kind of mission this is. All right, very good. Okay, Amy, very good. Hmm. Amy's offering to Shelly, maybe not facilitate away, but become comfortable with. And that's good. You're welcome, Sheila. Okay. Oh, you're so welcome, Pat. Uh, she's saying thank you, Jill, <sighs> for confirming my own wisdom also. Hmm. <laughs> this is such a good, I love the conversations with you guys. That's one of the reasons I love to travel with you guys, by the way. Um, Rose is saying such a beautiful, empowering message. My body is buzzing and my heart is singing. I feel like a gateway opened and so many things clicked in place. My dad was a Bible scholar and Sunday school teacher, and I wanted to believe everything he taught me. But there I was always asking the hard questions. Makes so much sense. Picked the perfect parents for this life. I also love having compassion for those who are Christians. So much love for family. And this is a reminder of how to deal with our different points of view. Love this. And thank you so much. XOXOXO. XO, XO. Oh, you're so welcome. Okay. All right. I do feel like I want to go to announcements. <laughs> Shelly just followed. She goes, wow, so true. Amy Serma, thank you. <laughs> you're so, you're so welcome. That's why it's fun to be right alongside each other, right? We can go, hey, wait a minute. You're, you're tricking yourself. You know that, right? So <laughs> oh. these brains, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. All right. So announcements. Okay. So, all right. Um, what's happening right now? Okay. So hmm, where do we want to start? Well, there's a lot going on. Okay. Um, February 27th, I will be on Beyond the Ordinary with John Burgos. And a year ago at this time, I was with John. Um, I, we had this amazing group of, of uh, fellow travelers. Um, and I, yeah, anyway, we just had this amazing group that went to Egypt and Jordan last year at this time. And now those when your memories are coming up on my Facebook feed, and it's just heaven <laughs> to look back at those and just go, Oh, God, it was, I remember that it was so good. And um, the exciting thing for me, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Hang on, stay tuned. Okay. So anyway, so I'll be with John again on Beyond the Ordinary on February 27th. And I would love for you guys to be there. We really uh, kick it up <laughs> when they kick up the light um, in a really beautiful way together. We complement each other very well, um, like soul siblings, and it's just awesome. And anyway, so I would love for you to be a part of that on February 27th. Special offer is still in the in the, still in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm still working on it, uh, playing with it with my team. But given today's message, I I I'm even more excited about. Yeah, whatever, whatever we decide to do there. And it could be something new. So, okay. And Goddess Isis just said, please, please be something new. <laughs> do something new. The uh, Zion Retreat recordings were awesome. And I'm offering that right now as a special offer on Carrie Murphy's. You guys, there have not been that many of you bought that bought that. When I look at some of my favorite messages, the lately especially of new stuff that we've carried in, those Zion Retreat recordings are 
awesome. And I'm hearing from so many of you, the few of you that have bought it, like, this is good stuff. Like, this is really good stuff. And it is. So for those of you that don't have it, I really encourage you. Um, so again, just, you could just Google Jill Renee Feeler Zion Retreat Recordings. Um, and make sure you include the recordings, though, or you'll get all the, the info for upcoming retreats, which, you know, look at that too, right? Um, anyway, so the recordings are awesome, and I highly encourage, if you're building a library and, and you have the money, right? I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not condoning, or I do not want to perpetuate uh, spiritual poverty, <laughs> okay? Oh, God, that's the last thing I want to do, hence the free stuff we're doing right now, right? Um, anyway, but if you are, if you do have the money to invest in your spiritual library and supporting your eternal light within, those messages are awesome. So again, it's the Zion Retreat Recordings. It is available right now. And if you just go to that website, it'll give you the link through Carrie Murphy's website. And I think there might be some packages left that have the private session with it. So um, anyway, get on that, people, if, if it is intriguing to you. But it, I... I need to listen. I want to listen to those recordings again, because I think I'd be surprised still at the level of information that came through. The Zion retreat members this past year were off the chain. Awesome. Um, and that directly affects what we do <laughs> together. So it was awesome. Um, so of course, the material that we recorded during those retreat, during that Zion retreat in October of 2018, are, are special, very special. So anyway, check that out. Um, okay, so Zion, John, February 27th, we have the um, event in Boise, the April workshop, um, at the end of April in 2019. And I, again, especially given today, I'm even more excited about that weekend with you guys. Um, and I'm, yeah, so glad that that, that idea came to me. And it was like, well, we could just get together in Boise, <laughs> right? It wouldn't even have to be a retreat and no hiking. It's just us, you know, in a comfy room. Um, and yeah, and anyway, so that's that's what that's for. So that should be fantax uh, fantastic. And I know I will be recording those. Um, and that would probably be a special offer in the future, um, maybe for another time uh, with John or maybe Harry. Anyway, um uh, da, 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 da. But for those that are there live, obviously, ah, we get to create it together. Okay, so that's April. And then in the end of September, I am still, <laughs> I'm so close. I'm like this close uh, to this, the September trip uh, to Greece, the Oracle. Oh, uh, <laughs> right. I mean, I know myself as an Oracle. I, I know many of you as Oracles. Um, we're not all oracles and that, that doesn't mean we're not all amazing and valuable in so, so many yummy, cosmically yum yum special ways, but the, to honor and reactivate hmm, the oracle energy that is in Delphi, in Greece, and go to see this, go to some of these other places this year. It will uh, let me get you the dates because <laughs> I, I do know those. I know those. Um, okay, let me see. Because again, we're, I'm so close with the um, uh, with the travel agency I'm working with to get the details together. Okay, so the dates are so you know. Um, day one is September 27th. We meet in Athens, and we end on. October 9th. And I'm thinking about, so it's a 12 night, um, but we, I may add another night in Santorini because I really would love um, two nights in, well, three nights, I guess it would be in Santorini at the end as kind of a reward for all the amazingness that we're going to be doing together. But I, it has taken some time, you guys, because I can't just take an off the shelf Greece trip. <laughs> that's, that's not why we're going there. Um, and there's all these awesome caves. And when you when you do the research on some of the caves that we're going to, Davilus Cave, the Acheron River ends in this cave. There's this local legend in Greece about, the, oh, their port, you know, and it's the underworld, you know, you don't want to go there. And I'm like, eh, that's so funny. It's because it's the same thing we did on the Mayan uh, trip is several years ago. I think it was April of 2015, probably. Um, 
we, I mean, we reactivated all these energies related to these portals. They're not to the underworld, they're to the other world. That's, it's a portal. <laughs> so there's no, there's no under, there's, it's not low, it's not hell. <laughs> it's, it's just hidden because we hid it <laughs> for the age that we're in. So we hid some of these portals, we deactivated them. And now it's time to reactivate them for fun. And we, I mean, we do it through play. We do it through us being there. Um, we feel it in like a, like, I mean, this is, it's, yeah. <laughs> Goddess Isis just said, she's speechless <laughs> for once. That's true. I am. Anyway, so it's going to be a very, very unique special itinerary just for us. It is just for our audience. Um, I don't offer trips and advertise them on other people's travel websites so that just anybody can come because that's not why I set them up. I don't want to just go with a whole bunch of people that have no idea, you know, what we just did here today. That, that wouldn't be even fun for me and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to leave my family uh, for that kind of trip. So the reason, one of the many reasons they are so special, the trips that we do, is because of you guys and us and me together. It's, it's because of this and something like what we just did here today. So I, I get it that people are looking for a great Greece trip. And I oftentimes get people saying, well, yeah, I've been wanting to go to Greece. And I, I, I know this person and this person and this person would want to come. But you guys, if they, don't, if they don't know me, if they don't know this about what you and I do together, I don't want to give them a spot. I know financially that's a, that's a poor business decision on my part. That's not my priority. So <laughs> it, it isn't about that. So the spots that I do really small trips, 20 people or less is what, is what we've been doing. I don't want buses of, you know, multiple buses of 100 people <laughs> traipsing through Delphi. And that's just doesn't seem fun to me. And this is the trip I am initiating and offering to you. So I'm, see, <laughs> I just felt the source energy say, sounds like she's being a little judgy in the creator energy way. Heck yeah, <laughs> you, you, you bet I am, <laughs> right? Anyway, so um, the Greece trip is going to be uber special and I can't wait to get the details out to you. So for those of you that are interested that you can um, consider it and hopefully sign up. And I had a registration personally, again, for similar reasons. I, I don't want to see a name on there that I'm like, I have no idea who this is. I've never heard their name before. We haven't done a session before. They've never signed up for anything that I've done. Um, now, if somebody is an audience member and they just because they haven't done a private session or they haven't done any of my classes, but they've appreciated um, our work, right? And what we're doing here through the free YouTube videos or through my book, Being Your Light, latest one, third book, um, then that's different. And then let's re reach out to me and let's have a conversation and, and let's start there. But anyway, so the Grease Trip, Okay, I'm close. I'm close. And I'm sorry, it's taking so long. I know September is coming close. Um, let's see. So and then the next trip will be Egypt. <laughs> okay, and I did send, um, let me get that email really quick. I have the uh, the person that I'm working with, the local, a different uh, travel agency that I'm working with on that one. Let me find Ahmad's so I can make sure I get the dates correct. Okay, so the dates for Egypt are January 10th, 2020 through January 22nd, 2020. And I love those dates. And what I found out is that on January 10th, there is a partial lunar eclipse, I believe, that is visible at 7 p.m. local time in Cairo, which is where we would be on the first night for the welcome dinner. So, um, sounds special, <laughs> doesn't it? And again, that itinerary is um, very different than what I did a year ago when we went. Um, and it feels, again, just really special. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see. So we did Greece, we talked about Egypt, we didn't talk about Zion. The Zion retreat is um, coming in October and that is already posted. So if that's already ready uh, to go for anyone that wants to consider that. And let me get the exact dates on that one. And see that one, similar situation. 
it, and I know I sound just so mean when I do this, but okay, so the retreat dates are October 24th through October 28th, 2019. Um, can't wait for that one. I love what we do at those. And we have found such, such fantastic hidden secrets pl places where there's petroglyphs and things like that. And the hikes are not that hard and it's okay if you don't want to do the hikes. There, every year there's a couple people that say, I don't want to go, I don't want to do the overlook one because it, it looks sketchy at first and then it gets easier. But if it's intimidating, I don't want you to do something that you're intimidated by. So anyway, it's not about the hikes. <laughs> That's not why we're there. But what I was going to share is for the Zion retreat, I had um, somebody that's newer to my work um, express her interest in going and that she wanted to bring a friend. And I, the friend was not aware of me before. And then I talked, I exchanged some emails and I kind of further tried to explain like, okay, this, these are actually what the spots are for. And, you know, if, if you're into my work and, and you have a sense of what we're doing here and, and why we're doing this trip, um, why we do these adventures, then, then that's good. But if you're new to me, uh, let's wait and like decide later. So I didn't take the registration. Um, yeah. I'm okay <laughs> with the, with becoming across mean um, in that regard because I know I know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, and you'll feel it too if you come on a trip with me. You'll be, and so there was somebody on the France trip that said, "How is it possible that she, they just said I just this is so awesome? I mean the group and the vibe and the you guys we are we're we're cool, <laughs> you know. I mean you guys that we listen to this and we are very different." And I'm not talking, this isn't about levels and better and all that kind of bullshit. This is, we are different, right? We tend to be less dramatic. We tend to be less petty. We don't pick on each other. When, if we're having a, having a moment, <laughs> a personal crisis, we don't make it other people's problems, right? And those are, I mean, we're a lot, we're really fun to travel with for many reasons, including that. Um, so yeah, anyway, <laughs> okay, let me get a sip of tea. All right, so the, the Greece trip, the way that you'll hear about it first is in my newsletter. As soon as I have it available and posted on the website, I will send it out in a newsletter. And I do send it out first uh, to those that were on like an Egypt trip with me or a France trip with me. Um, I maybe not too long before them, but I kind of send them the details first. Okay. All right, let's see. Got some more comments here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Dolores just said, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Hey, Deirdre. Deirdre. <laughs> Fellow Egyptian traveler. And I'm so hoping you come to Greece, Deirdre. And I know you're coming in April. She just said, yes, was going to Santorini anyway. Good call. Good, good, good. Okay. Great. <laughs> All right, you guys, I think that's it. There's a lot of comments here. Thank you so much for everybody. Thanks. Thank you for, thank you for you. I just, I appreciate you guys so much and I feel your love so much and I feel your support. And I love what we're doing alongside each other. I love it that I'm not in front of you, you know, and looking down on you as some sort of student kind of, you know, bullshit stuff. You are a bringer of light and I, I love interacting with you on that, on that level that we're peers, that, that we're, we are fellow bringers of light. It's just so, oh, so much more fun for me too. Oh, Jesus just said, yes. Um, yeah, and last week when I was sick, I just got so many beautiful emails from, from some of you. Thank you so much. And comments on Facebook and things like that. I just, I treasure you. Yeah. Love you guys so much. Okay, so bye-bye for now. Thank you for everything that you are. I hope you enjoyed this message. If you did enjoy it, I really appreciate you hitting like or subscribing to my YouTube channel, um, supporting this work and, and helping it uh, possibly be seen and heard by others who may also really, really feel liberated by what we're doing here. It is so different than what what else is going on in a lot of other communities. I'm not saying we're the only ones saying this. I don't know what everyone is saying, you guys. I, I don't want to prioritize my time keeping track of who's saying what. All I know is that the results that we're getting are amazing, and I want everyone to have equal opportunity for the amazing results of feeling the light of God within themselves without the bullshit. Okay, there we go. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>